I'm very happy that there's a platform. 30 days ago when I spoke uh, on another event like this, there was no platform and I doubt if they saw me. Um, but then today, of course, there's a, there's a platform and it doesn't matter whether you see me or not. I think what's important is if you pick something from what I'm going to share today, then that's fine with me already. Okay, now I'm Arlene Tablan. Uh, I'm going to share with you my journey, our journey on content marketing. I come from Axon Nobel. Now, Axon Nobel is one of the top players in the paints and coatings industry. And it's also the most sustainable. So it's a great company to work for. Uh, and I'm really excited to share with you what we have. It's the home stretch now, so bear with me, guys. Okay. Mm, and I pressed the wrong button. Okay, there. Um, earlier today, somebody said, oh, it's important it's, it's important that your content should be centered around the customer. However, I believe otherwise. And coming from consumer marketing, I believe that we must find that sweet spot between amongst the brand, the business, and the consumer. As Essie had mentioned, it is very important for us to deliver results. Otherwise, marketers will always be called fluffy. I don't know for, you, for some of you, if your CEO, especially if they come from sales or finance, and they will tell you what you're doing is fluff. No, it should not be fluff. We must deliver business results. The brand is also very important because as we know, especially for consumer marketing, if you do not have a strong tone of voice and brand persona, then your communication, your content can be misattributed to your competitor. Bear with me on this. So, Let's say you saw content regarding oral care. Which brand will you think about? Right? Usually, usually it, be, it is the market leader that gets the brand attribution, and therefore, your brand language should be very strong and should be very, very you, very much about the brand. The consumer, of course, we should always give them content that is relevant to them and that resonates well with them. Now, this is the start of our journey. So my brand is Julux. So our brand mission, adding color to people's lives. Our call to action, let's color. It's a fantastic brand. Imagine, imagine here, right? Um, okay, don't imagine. Okay, just be in your living room, okay. I always tell somebody, if you want to transform the way your living space looks like, or how you relate with the people, your family, inside your living room. Paint the wall. Paint it maybe Caribbean azure, you know, midnight, uh, midnight blue, as opposed to just having a white which looks like a hospital. And see how it feels like. I think you will feel sophisticated. You know, you won't feel out of place drinking a wine of glass at the end of the day, as opposed to, again, a white sofa and a white, and a white, uh, white wall. It's also cheaper than probably buying three throw pillows for your sofa, right? Okay, so I am really proud of my brand. We also, we, we don't just paint walls um, for consumers. We also do a lot of CSR. And so if you Google Julux Let's Color, you will see all of the work that we do when it comes to transforming spaces. So we've painted thousands of orphanages, poor, um, poor villages, um, um, schools, poor schools, so that people can really appreciate the power, the transformational power of paint. What about the business goals? So for me, what I will focus today is on the brand, brand salience and brand equity. I think all marketers here will, will agree with me that there is always limited ANP, right? It's never enough. And therefore, spending it properly, spending it effectively, into delivering the business results that you want is super important. So for me, what I will focus on today is brand salience and brand equity. And for the consumer, what do we know about our consumers? Depending on where they are in the journey, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Consumers want a home that they can be proud of. That when you get home today, you would want a space where you will really feel cocooned and be refreshed again for another day tomorrow. However, much as they want to have colors in their homes, they need inspiration, and most importantly, they need um, hand-holding in terms of the color combinations. Even if you say, oh, I want blue on my home, 
but there are hundreds of shades of blue. So which one will you choose? Which one will be suitable for the width of the wall, for the height of the wall, for the, for the lighting in your room? There are hundreds of them, and it is our job to handhold the consumer so that they will choose the right one. I mean, imagine painting your, uh, uh, your wall, then your mother-in-law comes and, wow, what does this look like, right? I mean, I'm sure you would want a space where everyone and, and the whole family feels, feels comfortable. Now, the other thing that is super important, mentioned also earlier, is you must understand the consumer journey. You must understand the journey of your customer. And it's not linear. Time and again, they will always go back, is this the right thing? Is this the right shade? How much paint will I buy? Am I going to do DIY? Am I going to, do, uh, am I going to hire a painter? And so on and so forth. So it is important for us to understand where are the pain points. And for each pain point, what kind of message will they be needing? Super important. Don't just be a content factory. It must be purposeful. It must be intentional. So um, <clears throat> I will focus so much more on ignite and inspire. And on that, uh, we said, OK, when we started our journey, focus on ignite and inspire. Focus on that because at the start of the journey, that is where we catch a lot of consumers. Um, what types of content are relevant for them? So we know that at this stage, there are a lot of triggers. Some of the triggers could be maybe Chinese New Year is coming. It could be a festive season or Christmas is coming. It could also be that you just moved to a new home. Or it could be you just want something new. So in all of those things, we must have content that resonates well with the consumer and that really ignites and inspires them. It's also important to identify what channels and touch points are, <clears throat> are to be used, sorry, because um, the type of content that you will generate, the form, will be dependent on the channel. It was asked earlier, which one starts, the creative process or the channel? Was that, was that very clear to you earlier? My point of view is it has to be the creative. It has to start with what you want to tell and then you find ways on how to choose the channels that are um, that, that, that the channels where your customers go to and the channels uh, that will resonate with them. Again, <clears throat> different kinds of content will, should fit the channel and should fit the consumer when they are at that part of the journey. So when we, when we said it has to be Ignite and Inspire, so what I will share with you is Ignite and Inspire because we also have content for the other parts of the journey. On this, research tells us that um, not only do they expect relevant messages, they don't want hard sell. When they are starting on the journey, they want uh, subtle branding. They don't want to be in your face selling. And hence, again, driving brand awareness and brand equity is important for us. Why, am I keep, why do I keep on repeating that? Because also, again, research tells us that when the consumers are going to buy their paint, usually they come to the store with only two brands in mind. And 80 to 90% of the time, they will buy either of those two brands. I have to be in their consideration set. Otherwise, the in-store experience will have to be so, so tough in order for my brand to be chosen. I need to be in the consumer's mind before they even hit the store. It may not be the same for your consumer or for your industry, but that is, uh, my point is you must understand, you must have the right insights in order to drive the right content for your uh, target audience. Now, I will share with you uh, three things. One is the color futures and color of the year. Uh, the other two are design reality shows, the apartment and come on in. So these are case studies that we have uh, when we started a journey on content. Okay, color futures or color of the year. This is about color trends. We have, been ha uh, we have had this asset for 15 years already. It's in a way unique to the industry, at least here in this part of the world. Uh, only a couple of uh, key players can afford to do this because it is a big investment asset. And it's an ownable brand asset for us. Okay, this is what, uh, what it is. Oops, back. 
Can you play the video, please? Every year, we invite international design experts to our global aesthetic center. Here, with our color experts, we identify our color of the year. We look at what's happening both within the design world at a kind of high-end level, but equally what's trickling down. Globally, rates of urbanization are rising massively. We have definitely seen now a movement towards more isolation. Everything is dependent on technology. We need to create shelters that protect us from the elements and equally allow us spaces to sit and look out onto. Very few people actually can shut down and say, let me enjoy the silence or the solace of my home. The colour of the year for 2018 is inspired by the warmth and ease of natural wood, as well as the tactile comfort of leather. People need a sanctuary from the world outside. Our colour of the year is a versatile shade that creates subtle comforting atmospheres, depending on the palette you pair it with. Our Colour Futures 18 palettes are comforting, easy and welcoming. They create a home in which you can retreat and relax. Okay. And this content we put in collaterals because in our industry, it is important always to have visuals because you are selling the dream of beautiful homes and beautiful spaces. We also, uh, we also published in our digital platform, so you could see here, and this is an evolution of how, we, of how we did this. Over the years, as we are doing this, it's because it's a big investment, consumers were saying, yeah, it's very inspirational, it's very trendy, however, I cannot connect with it. So some consumers want something simple. And therefore, uh, last year, we started doing something which is much more simple and much more um, easy for consumers to understand. So while you will see here, create a warm and welcoming home, or three ways to transform your bedroom with the Jolux color of the year. So these are the small pieces of content that we provided for them in order for them to connect with color of the year, because trends is just too sophisticated, too sophisticated for them. We also use influencers um, and social marketing. And uh, based on what we have done from last year, which is primarily, primarily focusing on the simple, um, simple activation and simple messages for consumer, our reach increased by 10 times and our engagement increased from 8% to 10%. Second one, uh, sorry. So on that, what, I would, uh, what, what we learned is that when you have an ownable and distinctive brand asset, capitalize on that. Amplify them across channels and activate consistently. The next one will be on Julux content. Uh, I'll talk about the apartment. So we have been doing this from seasons one to six already. How many of you have seen this? Okay, oh great, okay. Love you guys, all right. Okay, so um, what I will see in the video, uh, uh, what I will show in the video are some of the Julux assets that you guys will see in there. What, what we learned again is that even if it's 10 episodes, we have to be very precise about the brand assets that we really want to focus on. And this is how the video looks like. Welcome to the competition. We are back, bigger and better than ever. Right beside your homes is your Dulux colour inspiration room. And Mr Jeremy Rowe, your colour expert, will be on hand. Guys, welcome. I'm Sarah. When we walked in into the Dulux inspiration room, it was like playlands. We see all these different colours. <laughs> it's really inspirational. We are going for the chocolate kiss. That is ambitious. I like bravery, so that's good. What color do you think is best? The pink choice can make or break a room. Let's check out our colors in the Julux Visualizer. All right. Oh yeah, that looks good. The paint of choice was Julux Easy Clean because it's great for kids' room. Oh, 
Mix it up and made Smokey Todd. <laughs> a deluxe of our own creation. I am the master of ombre. I could be a deluxe masterclass ombre. <laughs> We used the marble and we added another feature to the marble. I love this. Oh. What would you recommend this to get? Do you love sweater shoe would be the colour girl? It should do well in the garden because it's a dual-lux sweater shoe. I think we should definitely go for glossy. I know they have an ambience. Pearl glow. Pearl, pearl glow. I'm so good at painting. Whoa. I love it's a new ambiance feature finish called Color Motion. With Dulux, they've actually got this jazzy little gadget called a color play tester. Oh, wow. Hey, look at I the love color. this color. Yeah, it's so nice. So we picked out the Dulux Ambience Metallic Pewter Paint. Looks like fun. It was really, really nice. Not bad. Wow. Wow. This one is amazing. They've done a beautiful job with the velvet. That is our colour of the year. I think this is the uh, colour of the year. It is, yes. I think you've used the colour of the year wonderfully. Wow, this actually Ooh, came up this. really well. That wasn't just ombre, that was a Monet. I love how this wove together two different ideas. Awesome. Colour madness. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, guys. Time out. Now, what we've done very recently and only last year is, why don't we drive viewership into the show? Because what we found out is that um, when the, the brand content is very good, the consumers who view it and the consumers who are not able to view it, they view the brand very positively and their brand preference increased very significantly. So we said, why don't we uh, experiment with something that we could do in order to amplify uh, in digital and drive viewership to the show. And um, 80, we did 86 webisodes, 140 posts. It's too much. Uh, that is our learning, but it works as well. The other one is come on in. So this is different because even if it's an, a home makeover show, um, Nikki and Andrea from Design Intervention, they did not mention the Dulux brand at all because they are, of course, not our brand ambassadors. And therefore, the branding in here is much more subtle. So again, this is an experiment for us to see, will this work? Now, in choosing somebody um, who will, in a way, represent the brand, and will, uh, even if they are not formally ambassador, choose somebody, of course, who embody your brand uh, in a way. So we chose them because they uh, they have that design sensibility, the East meets West design sensibility that Dulux is also known for. And um... design in Asia is Oops. actually entering a huge transformation. So the interest in the interior design industry that's changed in the last five years is miraculous. People are a lot more open, they travel, uh, and they're really open to new ideas. Well, come on in. East meets West is personally one of our favorite design implementations. Mm -hmm. We don't follow trends. We no, just we, don't. we just choose what's nice, what works for that project. Come on in Mondays on HGTV. Okay, on that. Um, Come on in. Brought to you by Dulux. Now in HGTV, why HGTV? Yeah, you guys know HGTV. However, most of the design shows that they have are from the U.S. And this is one of the rare, if not the only one, that talks about that uh, that is done in Asia. And because it focuses so much more on HDB flats and condos, it resonates well with a lot of Asian urban home dwellers. Now we again uh, focus focus on few brand assets. If you will remember, these are the same messages that we were talking about also in the in the apartment. And what we did was. We worked with them to amplify it. So we also said, can you promote it in uh, Travel Channel and AFC and Food Network, which are again in the same family? Because being in the lifestyle, uh, being in, in the same lifestyle show, I think it's important for people who are um, also in that same mode and in that same, um, with the same desire to also improve their home and improve their lifestyle to make sure 
that they are the, the show is seen as well. We also did some show shorts. So show shorts is their term. It's a snackable piece like this. When interior designers want glamour, we often use metallic accents. This ambience metallic silver special effects paint on the ceiling fills the room with an iridescence that just oozes sophistication. Inspired by lustrous metals, the reflective quality gives this room a luxurious new dimension. Choose a metallic tone that complements your color scheme and let it reflect who you are. Home design ideas brought to you by Geolux. If you want to create a space in your home to express your unique style, one place to start is with the walls. Like this room covered in Ambience Marble Special Effects paint. The finish is smooth and luxurious with the classic elegance of marble. The deep, intense colour, along with the dazzling art, family heirlooms and colourful fabric. It all comes together to truly personalise the space. You might think, oh, I know I'm selling too much of the paint. No, that's not, that's, not, that's not the point. The point is that one, you have to be very consistent about the brand messaging that you do across different channels and across different content. Work with your publishers in order to make sure that you reach more, uh, you reach more audience. So when we did this in the, both the Julux channels and the HG, HGTV channels, we knew that consumers love it and we got so much more feedback. And in terms of sales, the, the marble paint is the one that was actually doing very, very well. In terms of content, that is also matching. Now, again, our learnings for the apartment and come on in. Make sure that you have focused key brand messages. Make sure that you have a consistent brand language. Amplify it in relevant channels. And experiment as well. Measure and measure and measure and use those insights in order to make sure that your next form of content will work. Uh, 2016 versus 27 results, we got double the viewership on TV, even if our investment is only 10% uh, higher. Our digital campaign, we had a 400% increase in terms of results, and our brand equity was also much stronger as a result. So, in starting your content journey, don't forget it must be the convergence for your brand, for your business goals, and for the consumer. And uh, again, 30 days ago when I spoke about this, there were two people, two groups of people who approached me. Some said, oh, okay, I learned something about this. And then the other set said, oh, you inspired me to paint my home. Whichever, whichever message you got today, then I think that's good enough. Thank you and sorry for extending. No problem and thank you. Thank you Arlen for this colorful session. <laughs> All right, um, we have some questions for you. How do you measure the success of the Dulux content? Okay. I was expecting that question and that's why at the start I already said that what is important for us is brand salience and brand equity because when we, when we know that when the consumers hit the store, they only have two brands in mind. However, we can still connect that with sales and we do connect that with sales. In our industry, however, I still need to make sure that my CEO also understands there are other ways which affect sales. There are other factors which affect sales. Our industry has a lot of influencers, including what happens in store and especially the painters. So it's not a very direct correlation. However, we know that when the brand is strong, when the brand power is strong, we know that sales also go up. So that is, that is the, um, the attribution that I worked out with, um, with finance and with CEO. I know that most of you guys will, will, will get questions from your finance and your CEO, why are you doing this, and so on and so forth, so yeah. What are your ROI measures in terms of business profits, given most of the campaigns are very capital intensive? Um, brand equity again. So brand equity, so we measure, we measure that based on, uh, on a year-to-year -year basis, brand power, we measure that by country, we measure that by key city, so we also can uh, link that with whatever other data we have in terms of sales. Um, no, not the, the, the campaigns are not very capital intensive. You will be surprised. When you are a brand who is willing to experiment with something, the publishers will want to work with you. 
I've had agencies who, work, who came to me and said, we want to work with your brand. Actually, HGTV came to us and said, we want to work with your brand. Because they said that we appreciate what the brand stands for and that you guys would like, uh, um, have the capacity to experiment. And they also would like to do that. So it's not like I got it for a song, no. But we, we uh, I must say, we, it was really a very win-win uh, proposition for both. Um, so the answer is yes. Uh, working with broadcasters to do content episodes will definitely cost a bit. Does the investment quantify? Uh, yes. Yes, it's worth it. It's worth doing it. We started small, so don't forget, at the apartment, we are now going to shoot season seven. If you want to do, you, if you want to be in the casting, by the way, you let us know. Um, so, yeah, um, yes, but we started small, and then based on, does it work, does it work, does it work, what works, what doesn't work, then we kept on improving. And I think that's the, that's, we should be measuring it all the time, because then you never know, uh, you never know how to improve your content and what type of content works. If you have other questions, just approach me because I know the session is a bit short. Thank, Thank you, so. Arlene, and uh, it's memento time.